Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jordan. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for stopping by. All right, so today I want to go ahead and make a quick tutorial on how to use this right here. This is the Calibrite Color Checker Passport. Now, I did make a video basically like not comparing but showing you a bunch of different examples for how to get a more color accurate either video or photo. So I'll go ahead and link that up here. Basically using like a white balance like pop-up gray card or this or for photos specifically that little thing behind me right here. Now we're gonna touch on this more specifically because I use a mirrorless camera, the Canon EOS RP. While the colors in it are good, they're not necessarily completely accurate to what this is. Now, that being said, you can also use this, like I've used it on my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K and my Canon Rebel T7 in the back there. So if you're trying to basically use a two or three camera setup and you wanna get more color accurate, more color accuracy between the three or two camera setups. So if you're using, let's say, Canon EOS RP, and then somebody else has like a Sony a7 III or something, and you're trying to match the colors, this will definitely help. So as far as this goes, we're gonna go ahead and jump into some video of me showing you guys how this works. But basically, like I mentioned in the tutorial that I posted at the beginning of this, uh, if you guys haven't checked that one out, uh, I highly recommend that too. So but basically this is gonna be more in depth on how to use the Calibrite color checker. Now the top row up here has your yellow, red, magenta, blue, cyan, and green. Underneath it is your skin tones. And then you have a bunch of white and black and grays right here. So that, if you just shot this, that would basically just be your color palette. Now on the bottom down here, you have your black point your white balance and your white point. So this sets the black or the black point in your video. So how dark it is, this sets the white point or how bright it is. And then this right here sets the skin tones or your mid tones in the video. So just keep that into consideration. Now, if you flip this over right here, Calibrite also has a focus puller and this card right here, which is what they technically tell you to use for your skin tones. Now, it's entirely up to you if that's how you wanna use this. I basically just use this in DaVinci Resolve. I draw a power window around this little box right here to get my colors correct. And then I use this right here to get my black points, my white point, and my white balance correct. And so we're gonna go ahead and dive into the editing software right now. All right, so now we've jumped over to the computer to edit this. All right, so this is what I do whenever I use, uh, I even use this just for this camera particularly because I think the colors come out a lot better for this. So take this as you want, take it with a grain of salt. Now, I don't necessarily need this, so my old ways of editing stuff in DaVinci used to be I would make a bunch of nodes and I would go through with white balance, I would go through with color adjustments, contrast, highlights, shadows, yada, yada, yada. So with this actually it makes it a shit ton easier. What I'm gonna do first is I'm going to go over to the power window. Now, if you wanna zoom in on this just to make it easier on yourself, you can. Um, whether you zoom in on the actual footage itself or just zoom in like this. So first and foremost, what I do is whenever I sit down to record myself, which I know I say that and then actually didn't do it at the beginning of this video, which I probably should have, but Basically, I just make a little power window. I try to get it as equal as possible. And then I go up here, hit this little magic wand. And basically what that does is it turns that straight into all the information that I need. Go to the vector scope. And if you want, go ahead, pull your vector scope up. Now, if you're in, uh, if you're in Premiere Pro, I don't think Premiere Pro has this situation going on. Um, I've used Premiere at work and it doesn't necessarily have the same setup. This is why I love DaVinci because it's super easy to color grade. 
it's super easy to do anything that you need to do. So first and foremost, what I do is I go to the color warper because as you can see here, I wish I could blow this up a little bit bigger, but as you can see, but as you can see right here, the color is not necessarily in the middle of the vector scope. So basically I just take this and I pull all that information straight over to the center. Now it did kind of shift everything over here. So we're going to go ahead and mess with that. Now, like I said, what I do first is I pull it into DaVinci. I hold this guy up to the camera like so. Make sure that the color can be seen accurately from the camera while I itch my ear in the background. You get the gist of that, right? Okay, great. So we made a little power window outline of all the colors. So you got green, cyan, blue, magenta, red, and yellow. Go over to your curves tab and you're gonna hit hue versus hue. Right, you can pull that up too, but we're not gonna do that right now. So we're gonna start with green. Now you can make this as accurate as you want. So what I do is I will make two other points around that and I will take my green So the green is pretty accurate by itself, but what I'll do is I'll tighten up the green. So I'll pull that down a little bit, push that guy up a little bit and make a nice straight line pointing down to the G spot. And we're good on green. Now, if you want, you can go into the hue versus saturation and you can take your saturation and turn that up to whatever you like. Same thing goes with cyan. So basically we're just doing this for all the colors. This takes me probably, I would say roughly about five minutes. So now, as you can see, the cyan's having a little bit of issue. So what you can actually do is go over here too, kind of help move this along. Cause basically what we want is for that cyan to be pointing at the C on this. All right, we'll come back to that because cyan gave me a little trouble right now. We're going to move over to blue. All right, blue is... Uh, I also need a monitor that I can like uh, adjust a little bit better than this guy. Same thing with blue. We got to move him around a little bit, you know? Should be good right there. All right. Now on to magenta. Now, magenta is pretty good. It's not really crazy. You just tighten it up a little bit. Red, same thing. It's not necessarily terrible. Uh, and that's why I like Canon because, so your red is pretty much your skin tones, red and yellow. And those are pretty accurate. And that's why everybody says, they always like Canon's color science, and it's mostly because the color science points to skin tones, so that's why they're pretty easy to work with. Most of the images that you get out of the camera look pretty natural. Uh, there's a few things like magenta that don't really line up, uh, same with blue and cyan, so just take that into consideration. You have to move those around a little bit, but for the most part, they're pretty easy to work with. And that's why I like using this Calibrite color checker because... In DaVinci Resolve, I can throw a power window around it and let the software do all the work, but that doesn't really work all that well with 8-bit video like this. So 8-bit video is a little bit more like you just have to go color by color. It kind of sucks, to be honest, especially like if you're trying to hustle through stuff, but for the most part, it's not really that bad. And then I like to do this, and this is just my own personal opinion. So yellow, I pull down the saturation on that guy. Same with red. I pull the saturation down on red. Green, we can do the same thing with green. And just kind of make it an all cohesive, right? Okay, so we're done with that. 
hit Z on the keyboard, go back over to your power window, and all we're gonna do is just take that power window and then make it giant around the rest of the image. So this way, all of the stuff that we just did applies to the entire image. So that's before, that's after, before, after. Right? All right, so next thing we're gonna do See that thing I'm pointing at right now? That's what we're gonna do next. So apparently I didn't move my hand away from that. This is why I, I always throw this thing up before I start the video. Uh, so we're just gonna do this kind of cheesily right now. All right, so we're on to our next node. All right, so this is just gonna be, we're gonna label this as just the color node. And then this is gonna be our white, white, black, white, WP or white balance, white point. All right, so my finger is in the way, but we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did. There's these little like notches or corners on here. So power window, this guy, same thing. And there's a reason why I do this on this guy also. And we'll get into that here in a second. Now, with that being said, in DaVinci Resolve, and I know this that uh, Premiere does not have this at all. I don't know about Final Cut, but on DaVinci Resolve, in the color tab, there is this guy right here that is to set your black point. So obviously you wanna find your darkest point, bam. Your white point, find your brightest points, so. And then your white balance, same thing. Uh, there is also this thing that we're going to do too, which basically, this is entirely up to you. If you go into the parade or your waveform, you will see that. So you see right here, let's see if I can... Uh, Move this guy around. All right, so this right here at zero is your black point. Uh, 1023 is your white point. And then right here in the middle is your midtones. Now, you see how the blue is higher than the green and the red? Well, you can pull that down on your curves tab. Over to your curves, get your blue and you pull this guy down. And basically all you're gonna do is you're just gonna pull that down a little bit and match it with the rest of them. Now, if you wanna try and get the, this portion of your, If you want to go ahead and try and get that down to around 512, which is where your midpoint should be, by all means, go ahead and give that a try. I am not going to do that for multiple reasons because I've tried to do that before and it just never works. But if you are feeling frisky, my friend, I want you to go for it. All right, so now we have a more accurate white balance on this guy right here. Uh, we also have set our white point and our black point in the image so it looks more uh, cinematic, I suppose you could say. So this last node over here, what I have set up, is going to be for skin tones. Now, this is entirely up to you. Uh, you can mess with this as much as you want. So this is the before image and this is the currently... Let me, let me do that for you real quick. So that's your before. That's your before. This is your after. So as you can see, the colors and everything on this got a little bit more 
accurate. Now, as far as the white balance goes, if you feel that it's too hot, you can go to gain right here and then just pull this guy down a little bit until it is at your liking. And then also remember two kids, you can always hit control Z if you didn't like what you just did. Uh, you can also click on the bar and then just use the wheel to pull it down. I pull it down a little bit just because sometimes it gets a little too hot. And for 8-bit video, that doesn't necessarily work out a whole lot. All right. Last but not least, and this is the most important part. Uh, this, like I said, if you want... So these right here are for your skin tones. You can draw a power grid around those too. Or what I do just the old school way is pull up a vector scope. We're on our skin tones. Go to your qualifying tab. Click that guy. You're going to adjust your width until you start to see all the skin tone basically. And then you can use the selection range to zoom in. Start picking this guy. Denoise it a little bit. Clean blacks, clean whites. And basically what you're going to do is you're just going to go through. Right? I don't think I can get much more of this because I think once I click my forehead. Yeah. So it starts to bring up some of the other stuff. So... And this is why I said Canon's pretty good with their skin tone color accuracy. Anyways, I don't know why it's looking crazy like this right now. In the single, there we go. All right. Couldn't tell you why that happened. Anyways, all right. So you see why I said I like Canon because of their color science. Because once I did that, it got my skin tones basically right where I needed them to be. Now, entirely up to you. You can do the same thing. Go to hue versus hue. And then click on your skin tone. That'll bring it up. So we're in the red right now. If you want, you can just kind of fiddle with this a little bit. Same thing. What I do is I kind of try to make it straight on that line. And then I click that off and we're good to go. That's it. That's pretty much how I use the Calibrite Color Checker Passport. Uh, like I said, there is this little guy right here. You can go into DaVinci Resolve. It says X-ray color checker passport, but I'm pretty sure it's 99% the same thing. Um, but because this is 8-bit video, I don't think that it works as well. So just take that one to consideration. Uh, so basically, that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully that helps. I know this is a little bit longer if it's a tutorial. Uh, I'm going to try and trim it down as much as I possibly can so it's not 90 minutes long, but you get the gist of it. That is why I use that for pretty much every time I sit down to record a video, and I will guarantee you, you'll get much more color accurate video 95% of the time if you do that every single time, as long as you're not doing anything crazy. Uh, I've tried to save this as a LUT before. It doesn't work. I'm not 100% sure why. Um, but just take that into consideration too, because if you try to save this as a LUT and then maybe you're using a different lighting setup or your ISO is different or your light is set to a different temperature or your light is set to a different percentage. So like right now, my Godox SL60W is set to 38%. Let's say maybe next time I go to shoot a video and it's set at 53, it might not work. You're gonna have to adjust the colors. So I just do this every single time. It doesn't necessarily take me this long when I'm doing it for myself, but as far as tutorials go, that's pretty much the gist of it. So hopefully that helps. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If you didn't like this video, also give it a thumbs up. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit all the buttons. I'm Jordan, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.